So I'm going to talk about these two uh, issues. We're going to talk about milestone dates integrated into epics and roadmap bar edges using fixed dynamic start and end dates. These are two very important issues that we're going to be working on in the 11.2 milestone here. And so uh, the focus is on actually the roadmap view. So the roadmap view as it exists right now is, is what you see on the screen. And you know, it's fairly usable. Um, but what's important is that we want to get the roadmap view uh, usable for GitLabbers. So our first customer, our first user of portfolio management features right now, the target is GitLabbers. And the reason for that is because we at GitLab need to uh, plan longer term. And we need to have uh, the tools, we need to have the methods to do so. So many people are using uh, different ways to plan long term. They're using spreadsheets, they're using Google Docs, they're using uh, GitLab issues with a lot of different labels, but it's very uh, non-optimal, it's not the right way to do things, and we need to invent the tools so that we can, as an organization, can plan longer term. Uh, and it's something we need to do as GitLab scales, grows as an organization, and we work on uh, more uh, product uh, areas as we uh, grow our product teams, engineering teams, design teams, as we work on more features, as we plan longer term as an organization, we need these features. So therefore, that's why we're one of the first customers. And if we can do a good job or if we can uh, design the features that we will use, it's a lot more likely that our customers will use these features. So that's why it's very strategic in this case that we design the features that we will use ourselves. And so one of the first jobs of getting ourselves to use the feature or to improve the features, actually getting ourselves to use it. And so a huge problem right now is that GitLabbers are not using the roadmap view as you see right now. Uh, you know, I personally am using the, the roadmap view, but we're GitLabbers as a whole are not using uh, the roadmap view as, as much as we should be. In particular, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the roadmap view should be used by you know, product managers, engineering managers day to day to visualize what work is being scoped in the future. And so there's a couple of problems with the roadmap view and this, these two issues, in my opinion, will solve uh, the problem of product managers not even at GitLab not even using the roadmap view. And so once they're actually using it, then they can give the actual useful feedback and then we can iterate. So, so we have to get them to adopt it in the first place. And so we have to cross that threshold. And in my opinion, these two features will help. And the reason why these two features will help is that these two features that I'm going to talk about essentially allow uh, GitLabbers to do bottom-up planning. So, um, so there's two types of planning. There's top-down planning and there's bottom-up planning. So I'm going to talk about top-down planning first. Top-down planning is what GitLab epics and roadmaps already allow you to do right now. So you can go into GitLab, you can click into epics, you can create an epic, and with any epic, as you see here, you can assign, um, assign a start date and an end date. And so if you wanted to plan something far into the future, say you have an initiative uh, all the way in Q3 of 2019, you can create an epic and you can put a start date and you can put an end date in that epic. And, uh, and then you can say, oh, I'm going to work on it. You don't even have to assign any issues, uh, but you're just going to say um, it's going to start you know, in July. It's going to end in September of Q3 to 2019. And you can do that and you can put it on the roadmap. And that's great for top-down planning. That's when you want to plan big high level initiatives before knowing the details, the amount of work, the scope. You haven't even estimated anything. You haven't even created the subsequent issues. And, and you can do that right now with GitLab and it works fairly well. All you need to do is create an epic, put a start date, put an end date. You can even have some comments and have a discussion going and then you can plan those things forward. That's great. GitLab should do more top down uh, planning in my opinion. But unfortunately, we as an organization, traditionally, we don't do that type of planning. We do bottoms up planning. So that's why um, I'm pretty confident why we're not a GitLabbers or product managers and, and engineering managers in general are not using or adopting roadmaps and epics in GitLab as much as we can because it doesn't support bottoms up planning. And what bottoms up planning entails is that GitLabbers love to create issues, as you know, and we encourage that and that's a good thing. And so with bottoms up planning, what you do is you create a bunch of issues and, you know, prime managers, designers, engineers get together and they, they have all these issues and you, you combine all these issues and you put them into epics. And then you say, you start saying this issue belongs to this milestone, this issue belongs to another milestone. And so what they want, or what prime managers have said they want, is that they want these epics start date and end date to automatically inherit 
the, uh, the milestone dates of the issues themselves. So currently we do not support that. And once we have that, once we're able to add issues to us, to say here, to any, so let me, let me give you a better example. Say we have, um, this would be a great example of a Epic that has a bunch of issues. There's three issues here. And suppose the start date and end date of this Epic automatically inherited the, the earliest start date or of all the milestones assigned to these issues and the latest end date of all the milestones assigned to these issues automatically, then that's what GitLabers want or GitLab product managers want at least, as at least that, that's what they've been telling me. And then that start date and end date would automatically be populated here or it would inherit, it would be dynamic actually. And then the bar would just reflect automatically. So this is how GitLabers plan primarily. They do bottoms up planning. And therefore with that type of bottoms up planning, the roadmap bars would automatically appear. Uh, GitLabers don't need to set another start and end date. All they need to do is assign milestones. And GitLabers love assigning milestones because milestones already have a start and end date. So that's exactly what these two issues entail. This issue is about, um, so I'll, I'll let you read the details. And so the purpose of this video is not to go through the details, but it's just to give you that background context of why we're doing these issues uh, or these features and, and also to get you thinking about them and to, as you review the designs to, to say, I have a better way to solve the problem. The, the idea of this video is to provide you that context and that problem and to think about it before we chat about it in our subsequent meetings. Um, so as you see uh, on the, this first issue is about adding more fields to, our, uh, to the epic. So right now an epic has a start date and an end date, and these are fixed fields, right? You, you set them. And so what this issue is, and I'll show you the mock-up in a second that Pedro created for us, um, it will have a, another field that inherits uh, the earliest start date for milestones, and then it'll inherit the latest finish date of all the milestones. So the idea here is, I'm just gonna click through uh, let's let's look at one of these. I think this, uh, let's see, this might be a good one here. Uh, yeah, you see it here is blurred over, so let me, let me just click on this one, that may be better. Yeah, so you see the plan start date, there's a fixed version, and then there's a from milestones version. There's a none, uh, sorry, there's a fixed end date, and then there's a from milestone. So this one has, has none, so that's not very helpful. Let's go, go for one that um, uh, has some information already. And so let's look at this one here. So this one, you can see the planned end date. It inherited the milestone April 30th, 2019. So that's saying you didn't have to enter it manually. It just got it from all the issues milestones. And same for, for planned start date. And the idea is that you can choose. So as you see a radio selection here. So as a user of the Epic, you can choose whether I want to use the fixed version or the inheriting version from the milestones. And as a user of the Epic, you, they're, they're independent choices. Um, and then so you can you can th read through the epic to see all the details and all the edge cases and all the defaults I don't want to go through that here because you can you can read through that and we can talk about that in a meeting later But you get the idea and so once we have that once you've decided What is your uh, let's see? What's your end date and what's your start date? then the roadmap should automatically Interpret that as well. So the start date here and the end date there it should reflect your chosen selection. Um, so, so once we have this issue here for the Epic, this subsequent issue is just about fixing up the roadmap bar edges to reflect that choice. So, so I wasn't really sure from a technical perspective if we even need this issue or you might need to combine the issues, but you can see how these two issues are related together and you need to work on them together for it to make sense, um, but you get the idea. So go ahead and uh, scroll through the issues, uh, comment on them, and then we'll chat more as we uh, do the, the kickoff meeting later in the week.